Hello everyone, welcome to a DSP video. This DSP video, we're going to be covering the weekend preview, of course, but um, I'm going to read this forum post. So if you guys don't like me reading, if you don't like this part, I'll put the uh, timestamp to when I cover the weekend preview in the description below. Uh, so there's that. So let's get right into it. This is regarding the Twitch and Chill Marathon. Uh, not a lot of people were happy with it, but uh, according to Phil, everyone loved it. So let's let's uh, let's focus on the traditional games because this guy was very vote was very vocal about it. I don't I know OBS by the way is not capturing this properly, but that's 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 fine. I'm because I'm I'm gonna be reading it. So uh, here the traditional games said. Liar, you didn't you did one session of multiplayer on week one. You did not you did not do mods. If you get paid to do something, you fucking finish it. But you didn't because you're you're a fraud. Saying that no one wanted it is a weak excuse. You pocketed the money and dropped the project. You are a hack of a of a YouTuber and I'm done I'm tired with your bullshit. So I think this is in regards to Minecraft. Uh, because I guess he was gonna do like a Minecraft mods thing, and and he never did it. So, uh, you know, traditional games kind of called him out on that shit, and so they pocketed the money. Which he does, he does do. I mean, just look at Project Seven. I, I'm sure someone's gonna get triggered now that I said that, but we will get into that as I read the rest of this. Yes, because everyone told me the mods were only for hardcore Minecrafters, and that after repeated sessions of Minecraft streaming. I actually believe, I actually believe it had been once a week, um, uh, fro, I guess he meant four, over a month straight at the, at that point. It was boring and I should move on to something else, which I did and everyone approved. Again, if I'd keep, if I kept playing Minecraft and everyone had said it was boring, you'd also be on these forums saying that I didn't listen to viewer feedback and did whatever I wanted so that, so that's why my business failed. It's a broken record at this point. But the thing is, is that people saying that they're bored doesn't mean that you, you, you should just drop the game and just leave it. You can make it more entertaining. Like, if the game is boring, why don't, have, why don't you have more colorful commentary? I mean, and I don't even think that's what Traditional Games is complaining about. He, he, because he brought back that he said that he promised to do this, or he said something in a Patreon goal, that he'll do this, and then he didn't do it. See, this is what I mean when, with his Patreon, is that he words his goals, or he builds these goals around these, this, I, this promise that comes off as a promise. So when it doesn't happen, people are gonna get pissed. If he made it so that it's, it's not worded in such a way that's more like, yeah, it's to support me, if you do this, I will, you know, play a game or something. This is why I think the goals really should be rewards that's what they should be not not goals the goals should be like you know for the pc for better equipment that kind of stuff and you know and like he should really be having the rewards being the incentive for the goal he's not he's having it be the other way around which doesn't really work out very well and it, it just leads to this kind of issue but whatever let's Let's see what else Phil has to say. You cannot pocket Patreon money as it is donations with which the content creator can use as they see fit to uh, to best benefit their business. It is not Kickstarter where a final product is promised in exchange for crowdfunding. But the thing, again, see, the, see I wish I could go back and show you the Project 7 goal and then we can compare that because I guarantee... It, because I've read it like when I was was live, but if you read it, it sounded as if it was going to happen. Like he is going to work on Project Seven if this goal is reached. The goal was reached, and then he had to do a vlog about why he couldn't do Project Seven. He explained why he couldn't do it, but like that's the thing—he words these goals in the way that you expect something to come from it. If it's supposed to be for supporting Phil, that should be in the goal. Like, I've shown other patrons at this point, you know, I'm not going to do it again, but I've shown other patrons where they tell you straight up in the goal that this is to go to my bills. This is to go to get better equipment 
for my streams, to get better equipment for this, to do this for a full-time job, that kind of stuff. That's what you see in these goals. I've seen goals that had have literally that in them. Phil's goals isn't that. There's nothing in the goals that explain that, oh, this is to go into my business. He's, he does say that, oh, this is to pay the bills, but... Again, when I'm looking at his goals, and I want to, and, and, and all that stuff, all that shit, I'm gonna be looking for the good, like, oh, he's doing a marathon, okay, there you go, I'm sold. He does, he puts the, uh, oh, paying for my bills in the fine print of this big body of text. No one is going to read this huge body of text to get to the part where it says to pay my bills. So it's, so it, it's pocketing, it's just that he is doing it in a very sleazy way and using it as a way to defend himself when he doesn't deliver on things he promised in the goal. See, that's the thing. That is the kicker of, of, this, of his Patreon, is if something doesn't go his, play, his way, he'll just say, oh, it's, it's to support me immediately. But when it goes his way, it's, guys, if we did it. We did the goal. Like, it, it sends conflicting messages. Because when he talks about the goal, he talks about how it's, oh, the goal. You know, if you don't hit the goal, like, we won't do the goal. The goal needs to be hit if you, if you want to do the goal. If you, if you want this marathon to happen, you got to, don't, you got to pledge to my Patreon. So, why do you think people are making these claims about Phil's Patreon? They're not getting this, uh, uh, idea from, you know, from a cherry tree. They're not mentally ill to come up with this. When you sit through his, his pre-streams, when he talks about Patreon, you he talks about the goal. And, and he says, if you want this goal to happen, you have to pledge to my Patreon, okay? And that's what he, he does. Yeah, he does say that, oh, my Patreon is to support me financially and to keep this going as a business. That usual routine as well. But do you think the but do you think that's gonna be the highlight of the thing that a, a random person hears when he's talking about it? No, they're just saying, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want this marathon to go." That's why I guarantee, if the PC goal is hit, and that, or you know, if it doesn't get hit, if that PC goal is gone, I guarantee people are gonna get fucking pissed. I guarantee, I guarantee that's gonna happen again. But you know, of course, he gets all these. Has all these excuses for why he can't do certain goals. Then change the goals. You know, if if you have to sit there and, and explain constantly why the goal did not get hit or why you didn't follow through uh, with that promise, then it's clearly the misconception of the goal. And you really have to think about that. That's why I ultimately canceled or put on a big hiatus for my Patreon. I was thinking of opening a Patreon. Right now I'm putting it under the table because I have no idea what goal I want to put up on it. I want a goal that 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 is something that I think is fair for both of us, for me and the person who wants to donate. I don't want to have a goal there that is going to mislead people. I don't want to fucking do that. So I'm tabling it until I have some recollection or idea of what I want to do with it. I, But he is just... But he's a goal out there, people are constantly having to explain, he has to constantly explain why, you know, what happened with the money and all that shit. But he doesn't think that maybe it's something to do with the goal being worded weird. Maybe he doesn't see that people are expecting certain things from a goal. He doesn't think that. He just thinks, oh, these people are just detractors who, who think this, and, and they don't fucking understand Patreon. But when you look at your goals, Phil, it, it gets very fucking confusing sometimes. Because, like... You know, I go to Mega 64's Patreon. I know your favorite YouTubers at this point. They have a goal for version four. They hit. They reached that goal. It's happening this this summer. They have. They had a fucking trailer to show it off when they announced it. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna. It's gonna come out this summer or at least next year at the latest. Um, I mean, like it's it's obviously that it's, it's that that you know people are donated to their Patreon to make version four happen. That's why version 4 reached the Patreon goal, because people wanted that to happen, and they do want to also support Mega64. The thing is that I'm, I'm tired of hearing from uh, certain people is that they're saying, well, the whole point of Patreon is to support him. I agree. That is the whole point of Patreon, but when you have goals that say, this is, go this is gonna happen if we reach this goal, 
then you have something to deliver because you, that that's why people are supporting you. The goals are supposed to, to entice people to support you because, you know, it, whatever. Let, let's just continue. Uh, I've explained this to you personally before. Content creators are not held to one percent, one hundred percent letter of letter of the law delivery rate on goals. Oh no, wrong wrong window. Whoops, whoopsies. Let's let's fact check that. Does Patreon hold you accountable for Patreon goals? Okay, we're gonna go to terms of service. Let's uh just do goals. We are constantly testing our new feature with a goal, making Patreon a better place. Uh Patriot's content. Great infringement and the disclaimer. I don't see anything to do with the goals, but I have a feeling it is. There is something. Um, the real creator is to be charged patrons a month. Uh, Five percent. Um, Well, I guess it doesn't say. So, never mind. Maybe there isn't. Either it's more more a uh, spirit of the law agreement, where as long as the kind of creator ad attempts to come uh, to come through with the promised goal, it's accepted as uh, as complete. In the uh, case of the two goals you keep referring referencing. I very much delivered on the spirit of the goals. Again, you know, you know this, and you are a broken record. So this, I guess, the spirit of the goal of Project Seven is that he got the money. So, so he did it. He did Project Seven, guys. He he got the money. Okay, but the thing is, is that it being legal or not isn't really the big issue. I'm not saying what he's doing not delivering on goals is illegal. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna say that. I, I mean, I did look for the terms of use. Doesn't. Really, I didn't really find anything to say that. Oh, it's against the terms. But the thing is, is that if you're gonna have a goal and you have people pay money for that and you're not gonna deliver on that money, people are gonna get fucking pissed. It doesn't matter the context of what people are pay, you know pay for, but they give you money. Like, I guarantee if Mega64 did not do a version 4, if they were like, ah, we're not going to do it, they're going to have a lot of people pissed off, and they're not going to do donate again, because the thing is, the thing that people really need to think about when they, when they see Patreon goals, and they really need to think about this, is that if they don't deliver on the goal that, that you paid for, like, oh, I want to support Phil, and I really want this goal to happen, give him the money, and... I, I supported Phil, but then, you know, the goal I paid for didn't happen. You know, that might burn me. I mean, that's not gonna, I mean, that might, I might still support Phil regardless, but I'll probably sit there and be like, well, Phil, you're a fucking asshole because you didn't give me the, the goal I, I wanted to happen. And, you know, the, and it reached the goal. It wasn't like it didn't reach it or something. It wasn't like, oh, Project 7 or, you know, whatever, it reached halfway and then, you know, we didn't hit the goal. It's not even that. It's just that the goal was reached and it didn't happen. I mean, look, Phil, I'm I'm I don't mind supporting you, but you know, I really was looking forward to this goal that was reached to happen. You you do need to be held account for something. I mean, the, the whole thing is like, it's not illegal. It's not illegal to to do this. It is a shitty fucking defense, and it is to to me, it just shows that he's more okay being lazy as long as he can get away with it. Like that's the thing. It's like. If you are a patron, that's fine. You you can support him all you want, but if you're not gonna like at least hold to some standard or something or ask something about his Patreon to do more of, then you're a fucking doormat. Like you can definitely support Phil and then 
not maybe maybe not demand, but ask for something more out of his Patreon, you can fucking do that. It's fucking bullshit that this guy gets away with so much shit he does on Patreon by the very same people that support him. Like, it, it really just tells me that he can li literally have a goal for him sitting in a chair, and he'll reach the goal, and he'd sit, uh, sit down on a chair, and if someone said, Phil, I give you twelve fifty or ten twenty five, one thousand and twenty five dollars. Uh, can you not maybe not sit down on a chair and actually do something you know more worthwhile of that money, you know? And then someone's saying, hey, 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 buddy, buddy, you paid so that you could support him, and it's like, yeah, but he, I, he has one thousand twenty five dollars. He, 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 I, I do want to expect a little more from him, you know? It's, it's like, you know, you buy a video game. You're paying 60 bucks to get that video game. Now, you now you can, now, people are going to say, well, it's okay to ban the, the game is good because you're paying $60 for that game. But you could also say, well, when you buy that game, you're supporting the company. So if you want to support Suda51, you're going to buy the new No More Heroes game. That's what a lot of people do, and that's a lot of rationalizations to it. There you go. Why do you think Phil went on this rampage? Like, don't buy Street Fighter V because you're supporting crap. So, with that logic, you can apply that to his Patreon because he offers goods in return. But, but whatever, I mean, I guess, I, I guess I'm an idiot for thinking that. I mean, I, I mean, it, it does kind of drive him up the wall when people try to defend this kind of sleazy behavior with Patreon when it's really not, when it really should not be condoned at all. Yeah, it's not illegal, he's not going to go to jail for this, but you're giving him money. And he's not going to deliver on promises or at least, or and try to find ways to justify not delivering on the promises he told you about. So he can get you to donate for a goal by false pretenses, and you're supposed to be okay with that. Okay. Bottom line, you're upset because you, for some reason, were expecting a seven-hour talking with the stream chat marathon from me on Sunday. But you said... In every pre-stream, every fucking video, every video, when he's talking about the Twitch and Chill stream, it was that, it's not going to be intensive on the game. I'm going to be talking to stream chat. He literally has been saying that. Oh, now, now that's not the goal. Now that wasn't the promise. Now it's something completely different that he never said. N magic. <laughs> Sound like a DSP magic, dude. That wasn't what was promised at all. It it, it was. Uh, you you are in La La Land if you uh, don't see that it was. But okay, I played all three of the top three most nominated games here on uh, from this thread. Only I played more of Jackbox than any anything else because that's what uh, the people in the stream chat, you know, the people who I was interacting with actually wanted. But the thing is about that was that. The only, the one that he jack, Jackbox games, he, he, he was, he didn't even want to, he didn't want to buy. The game was $25, and he didn't want to spend $25 on it while he got $1,025 for that goal. He didn't want to spend $25 on Jack, on uh, Jackbox for the marathon that reached the $1,025 goal. Okay. You pledged expecting some kind of personal delivery of a goal that wasn't promised, and that's your fault because Patreon isn't Kickstarter. So it's so it's traditional games. Let me get this straight, Phil. It's traditional games' fault for giving you money for a goal that you said you were gonna not be intensive on the game, and you're gonna uh, talk to the stream chat, interact with them, and it's his fault for expecting the things that you said and. Pre-streams, the weekend previews, and all these other things. It's it's his fault. Okay. I mean, that's the thing. Right there, and it, with, his, with his apology video, he really, really exp acts as if it's your fault for everything. Oh, it's your fault you took uh, my lazy comment negatively. It's your fault, so I'm sorry you felt bad that I said you were lazy. Oh, it's your fault you expected this, even though I didn't promise this, even though in pre-streams in the weekend preview said this and that. No, 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 it's your fault. Okay. Twice you've been a patron, 
and twice you foolishly expected some kind of personal delivery of a product, which isn't what Patreon is, and then complained afterward insulting me personally. But insulting him personally? Well, actually, I guess you did kind of, you called him a hack, so there you go. But, um, he, whatever. I mean, it's like, the, Patreon isn't a, a website where you promise goals, even though uh, there's a goal where if we hit this goal, I'll be doing this thing. No, that's not the point of it. I just use it that way, so, so suck it. Like, the point of Patreon isn't to, isn't to pay for the goal, but pay for the, but don't need the Patreon to hit the goal, but, but. The goal isn't the point, but you gotta hit the goal, but that's not the point. It's to support Phil, but you gotta hit the goal if you want this to happen. But if you want this to happen, you gotta hit the goal, but that's not the point of Patreon, because you're gonna be supporting P Phil. But the point, but if you want this goal to happen, you have to hit the goal. Okay. And it seems the problem here is with you! Not me. Therefore, since you can't use Patreon responsibly, I've permanently removed you as one of my patrons. Oh my god. He has to get the last say. Because in traditional games, his fucking post, when you see it, he says he is not gonna. He, he even says he's not gonna be donating to his Patreon anymore. He. Was, he already left that station and Phil's like, well, the, well, I'm removing you permanently from Patreon. I don't want you anymore. Like he has to, he has to make, he has to come out on top, and he, he probably banned him too after this. I don't need uh, funding from people who can't act like mature, responsible adults and not cause drama and problems afterward. Literally, nobody had a problem with yesterday's event uh, besides you. Hence, we know uh, where the problem is, where the problem lies, and I've now ended the problem. Is the drama starts starts all the time from his fucking goals. Like, look back at every single drama that starts from Patreon, Project Seven, um, Patreon's Choice. All these goals that either did not get hit or had some kind of controversy or drama attached to them. Look where they originate. Look where they stem from. It's not from traditional games. It's not from me. It's not from you. It's not from, uh, uh, you know, the guy next door. It's from the goals. Because people read the goals, they listen to him to shill the goals, and they get this idea that if I donate to Phil's Patreon for this goal, I'm gonna do that. And then when the goal doesn't hit, you're not, you're supposed to be okay with that. So, so when he says that, well, if you, so how do you rationalize the whole thing, when Phil says, the whole, you know, if you want the Patreon multiplayer event to happen, or in this case, the Patreon's Choice uh, playthrough to happen, you have to hit the goal. So if it's about supporting, then why, then why have these fancy goals? Why? You know, if the whole point is to, is to support Phil, then why should he have these goals that promise things? That says you'll get this out of this. If it's just to support him, why not just have that be the goal? And have the rewards be that. No, he can't do that because he can't do it. Okay. Alright, enough of that. So, let's get to the weekend preview. Uh, let's see how long did I talk there. So, 23 minutes. So, we're on 23 minutes. Okay. Let's get started. Hello everyone! <laughs> What's going on everyone? DSP here. Welcome to the Week in Preview. Today is Monday night. It's the week I, I it's the week in preview. I don't know why January I January twenty-eighth, twenty seventeen. Why am I wearing this hat for my Halloween costume in this last October? Because I'm stupid and it was sitting over there and I said, What the hell I He is stupid. He did say he was stupid. He he was dumb. And he wants to be funny. He wa he's not a clown, dude. Don't fucking say he's a clown threw it on my head just to be dumb um not a clown it's 7 47 p.m on monday night and you're probably if you usually follow along my weekly series 
uh, here on the King of Hate Vlogs, you're probably like, why in the holy hell is Phil recording his weekend preview on Monday night? What is going on? This is very odd. It's out of the ordinary, right? <clears throat> well, there's an easy answer. I'm not censored here. There's an easy answer here for you. Uh, yesterday, <clears throat> I did a marathon, a special event marathon, in celebration of hitting the patron funding goal for the month of December. So, we did a Twitch and Chill stream. It was really fun. It was seven hours of interactivity with people in stream chat playing various games. I played games from Jackbox Party Pack 1 through 3, another game called Choice Chamber, and then I did some Stardew Valley where I did Q&A with people in the stream chat. So there was a lot of interactivity, the most interactive thing I've ever done ever on the internet, seriously. Um, it was so weird and different, but a lot of fun, and people who've seen it so far, <laughs> whether they were there live, or they watched the videos on demand on YouTube overnight. And he also said that the uh, uh, Twitch and Chill was going to be on Twitch only, but now, now it's on YouTube. Figure that, right? Okay. They did all go live last night. I said it was absolutely amazing. Hilarious, because there were things like, I was doing Quiplash, and, and uh, uh, what was the other one? Fibbage, these games from the Jackbox Party Pack, and I was playing with other people, and they were saying, like, you know, obviously purposely trolling things to insult uh, me, you know? But I would actually out-troll them, and I would say more- I would out-troll them, dude! Look at that fucking show, like, and, and the thing is that, I'm gonna do a, a, a shout-out to our boy, D. Davidson, he- Great YouTuber, great channel. I highly recommend uh, subbing to his channel. I will link the video that I'm going to be talking about in the description so you guys can check it out. But, um, he did a small, quick little 15 minute montage of his Twitch and Chill uh, marathon. And the whole, oh, I outrolled them, really wasn't that great. He got very salty that he lost to Kojima World Order. Very salty about that, and him trying to, uh, to, like, everything that he was making fun of himself with was just kind of lame. It was very lazy stuff he chose, like, you know, one of the things he picked was Unapologetic Beggar Man Phil. That's one of uh, the things that Phil uh, did in uh, one of the games, and it's just like, okay, like, I don't know. It's it's, it's just it, it wasn't something that he should be proud of, in my opinion. Like he didn't really roll with the punches exactly. Like he could have made a Scarface joke. He could have made a joke about the things he constantly says on stream. Like you know what I mean? <sighs> Snort. Um. You know that kind of stuff. But instead, he goes to like these extremes that kind of. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. That's just that's just me. I, I didn't think it was that funny, and I don't think he did, did a good job out-trolling the trolls. Trolling things about me that they could even think up, and I would end up winning the rounds and stuff, and we were all having a good time. I, he didn't win that many rounds. I think he won, like, one round, I think. Um, I know Goutman won once, or Kojima World Order, you know. But okay. You know, that's the thing. Being lighthearted and kind of laughing about myself, it was hilarious. It was very entertaining and fun. I loved doing this, and I definitely am looking forward to maybe doing it again, especially if I ever get a random day here or there on a weekend, maybe, where there's, like, downtime and there's nothing major to do, no new release. I would love to do a downtime streams like that from time to time, okay? <clears throat> if you haven't seen the videos yet, they're live on DSP Gaming. I strongly recommend you check them out. You will not be disappointed. It's something so different oh, from I'm what you would expect. Already. It's not a serious playthrough that I'm doing. It's just me kind of messing around with people, and it was a lot, of, a ton of fun, okay? Um, overwhelmingly positive feedback. People are telling me they definitely want to see me do it again. So that was all day yesterday. Obviously, because I was doing that all day yesterday, I didn't have a chance to film the weekend preview. That that marathon didn't even end until after 7.30. Uh, I didn't get done uploading videos until after 8 p.m., so I didn't have a chance to film the weekend preview. So that's what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Allow me to explain this week. Wow, what a week we've got ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. No fewer than two big, high-profile new release games. The biggest... New releases and first slew of them for 2017 finally already, right? That's great. Now at the end of January, we got high-profile new releases starting tonight. Special late-night coverage of one tonight. Um, and ongoing throughout this week, which is awesome. Um, 
later this week some special stuff that I'm probably going to be able to do for you. All right? So let's right. talk. Let's talk turkey. Let's First talk all, turkey turkey. Today I finished mm -hmm. my ongoing playthrough of The Legend of That's Zelda true. Ocarina of Time 3DS. Good. Perfect timing because if Perfect. I didn't get it done, that would have been a lingering playthrough, right? Now that I'm getting into all these new releases. But I remember when he said that it was okay for uh Zelda to be lingering because it's a downtime playthrough and he can always go back to it on another downtime moment. And he doesn't want lingering playthroughs, but then he has uh, Scarface lingering. But that game sucks though, so it's okay. Didn't get to finish that one. It would have been like, God, it's going to take forever to finish. The good news is I wrapped it up today. Wrapped it up. Done. So absolutely no lingering playthroughs. I finished my Dark Souls Redemption run. I finished Zelda. Everything is completed. Everything is good to go. Two thumbs up in that regard. Tonight, not even in about an hour's time from when I'm filming this right now, 9 p.m. Pacific time, I'm doing a special two-hour premiere stream of Resident Evil 7 on my Twitch TV channel, twitch.tv forward slash darksidephil. Really looking forward to this because no one really knows what to expect out of Resident Evil 7 being the demo was so different. A first-person survival horror puzzle game that seems nothing like the previous re previous Resident Evil game. So we're Nothing like the previous Resident Evil games. The only thing that is different in this particular game, I'll tell you what it is. It's the perspective. We've never had a Resident Evil game that's in first-person, at least a main entry, at least. But... We, but like, there's pu been puzzles in Resident Evil since 1. Resident Evil has always been puzzles. That's the one thing that people hated about 6, was that there were no puzzles. There was no, like, intricate puzzles for the mansion or, like, you know, or for anything. It was just kind of, okay, go to, from point A to point B, shoot, shoot zombies, go. And that's all, it was a Michael Bay movie. Uh, Resident Evil has always had, had, uh, puzzles, and that's what Seven has. It has these puzzles, creepy atmosphere, uh, it, it feels like a survival game, which Resident Evil is. When you play Resident Evil 1, if you just, you know, shoot all your bullets, you're, you're gonna get fucked when you go to the bosses. I've been in positions where, like, you know, I fucking, I'm reckless with something, I get fucking slammed for that. Resident Evil... Uh, seven has that. Uh, again, if you, I, I, I've, I've been playing it. I played on Madhouse first, which was a mistake because man, Madhouse fucking slams your ass so hard. It's it, it it's a lot. I like how hard it is, but I uh, that I decided to go back on normal because I wanted to play to at least beat the game. Um, I do want to go back to Madhouse. I, I'm not dropping Madhouse. I'm going to be doing a uh, Madhouse run for sure because I love the challenge. I love how hard it is. I love that it has suspense in it where I'm going between save rooms. I'm like, oh my god, I need to go to the save room. I need to find the next save room. This is fucking intense. And that's what I love. I, I never had that feeling in a Resident Evil game in a long time. And Seven has that. And that's why I love it so much. I... Love the the the, the the pure terror of, of going from one save room to the next. So it's not completely different from res old Resident Evil games. It is a different perspective and different way it's telling its story. It's not being told through cutscenes as much, but you still get that nice beat of a story. And I, I think that they opted for a better for a better way to convey that story. Uh, it might not be as, as, I might not like the story as much so far as 1, but I do like it more than 6. I do like the story a lot for what it is. It's enough to keep me going, because it's creepy, and I want to see what's going on, and that's what I like. It's been something that, that's been absent with Resident Evil for a long-ass time. That you can see a story that's being told to you directly, and you can get a story by just looking at the environment around you. So it has a lot of stuff that is from old Resident Evil games. There is some new stuff, sure, but it, it's to me, 7 is a love letter to fans that really were burned by 6, in my opinion. Oh, wondering, what the hell is this game going to be? I cannot wait. Tonight I'm doing two hours, and then Tuesday I'm going to be doing two sessions of gameplay, okay? Pretty mm -hmm. awesome that in the first day of this game being out, I'm going to be playing it, you know, seven to hours or so. That's pretty cool. 
So, pretty cool. Resident Evil, all about Resident Evil for the next day or so on my stuff. On Wednesday, I'm going to play more Resident Evil. Now, some people have said I might even finish the game by uh, that session on Wednesday because they're saying it's around 11 hours long or something like that. I guess we'll see. Wednesday night, what I'd like to do is a video basically saying, here's my thoughts on Resident Evil at this point, okay? Now, I don't really know if the game's only 11 hours long. Also, I've heard the game has two endings, and I don't know how to get the two endings, okay? I don't know what leads to you getting the two endings. Maybe by mid-later or this week, we'll all know, oh, there's one way you do this one thing, you get one ending, you do this another way, you get another ending. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm hoping is by mid to late this week, I'll have finished up my first run through Resident Evil 7. I'll either be able to do like an impressions video for KO Gaming, if not the review for KO Gaming. Okay, that would be pretty awesome. Um, now, my playthrough of Resident Evil 7 is going to be a normal playthrough. There will be face cam, because it is a horror game, and people love to see face cam when I play. Face cam, clown playthrough. Dude, I, I saw, like, the first playthrough of Resident Evil 7, uh, playthrough, whatever. I, I, I hated it. It was, it was torture. It was just nothing but him saying, Wow, this is like the demo. Wow, wow, dude. This wasn't in the demo. This is new in the demo. The demo, dude. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Demo. But that's the first uh, part. And then later on, it, it became something else where he started questioning shovels and shit. Like, okay, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Horror game. So that will be. I'll have face cam. But it will not be it with the PlayStation VR. So people have said, Phil, do it in PlayStation VR. You got to do it in PlayStation VR because it's fully compatible. There's two reasons why I'm not doing it in PlayStation VR. First of all, because it's an 11 to 12 hour game. The first time I'm playing this game, I want to enjoy it. It's an 11 hour game. It's a short game. And he won't do face cam. He won't do v uh, VR at all. At all. Even on the pre-stream he did today, which is uh, Wednesday, as I'm recording this, he said in his pre-stream, I am not doing this in VR. Uh, uh, you know, maybe I'll do... But it's like it's a short-ass game. He beat it, like, the day after it came out, and he doesn't want to do VR at all. He could do fucking VR. I don't want to have this VR headset on my head where every 20 minutes I have to take a break because my head's sweaty and my neck is fatigued, and a game that I could probably beat in a couple of days end up taking all week because I can only play a couple hours at a time because I'm using this PSVR monstrosity. I'm sorry, but from my experiments and my use of the PSVR, it's just monstrosity. He paid. He bought it for like what, one thousand dollars or something. He, he cl I think he claimed he spent one thousand dollars in the PSVR alone. Like, well, not the, not the console itself. The console was like four hundred dollars, but he it totaled to one thousand, I guess, because by the game with all the games he bought, I guess for it, he bought the VR and he's like, oh, it's a monstrosity. I'm not using it. Dude, I someone brought up on Twitter today, which is a good point. No one is playing Resident Evil 7 in VR currently. He could be the the guy to like get those views that those views that people didn't think, you know, whatever, he can get them, but he's not going to. He's just going to do the same base bland Resident Evil 7 playthrough. Maybe do VR someday, maybe. Uh, because I, I, thought, I know tonight he's going to put it as a poll, but whatever. Not a very, uh, what's the word, comfortable thing to use. It's not. It weighs down on your neck. It makes you sweat. It makes you feel uncomfortable. And even though I did play the Resident Evil 7 demo in PSVR, the overall experience of it, in my opinion, was not as good as when I played the original demo uh, back in the mid-2016 with just the controller and the TV. Why? Well, this is, uh, th this is gonna lead to part two. It's not just about the discomfort, but part two, because number one, when you play in PSVR, your field of vision is small. So right now you're seeing me in widescreen. When you play in PSVR, you're playing in a box. So immediately your field of vision of the game is tiny. It looks like you're looking through a fisheye lens when you're playing the game and the visuals aren't very good. People said that when they watched me play the VR or the demo in VR, it was too jumpy. That it looked like it was jumping all around and they didn't enjoy it because- But that's not the VR. That's your fucking head, Phil. You're doing this. And of course it's going to get people to be fucking like, whoa. Maybe instead of moving your head all over the place, you could just hold your head still like, like you would and be like, 
guy over there. See the guy over there? Yeah, whatever. You don't have to be like this. Whoa, guys, I played VR! Made them crazy. Not a clown. In addition, people who've tried this with PSVR found out that the game has bugs. In fact, the subtitles for the game of the dialogue show up behind the characters in PSVR for some reason, which obviously is a big problem because that's not the purpose. The purpose of subtitles is to be out front so you can read them, and they accidentally put them behind characters in this game. So it's like what a game-breaking bug! Wow, wow, subtitles behind characters. Oh my god, man, dude, how is Resident Evil Seven playable? I need to read subtitles. At all times! At all times, guys! The visuals would look terrible for this run, and it would take me forever to beat the game because I have to take so many breaks. So the answer is no, I'm not going to do a run of this game with PSVR and make a horrible experience. The viewers the viewers won't like it because the view, the, the visual quality will be terrible. But the detractor kids it will like it. too much of a, a fucking mm. pain in the ass, okay? Now here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's say... I do a run through the game. I beat it by, say, Thursday-ish. And people were like, Phil, we really want to see you try it in PSVR. Maybe later in the week I would consider running through it now that I know what to- Maybe? Maybe? Why not fucking do it? You beat the game. He beat the game, by the way. Why not just do it? Why not do another run and- Dude, if he does Madhouse- Dude, if he does Madhouse, I'll fucking watch it. Regardless, if I beat it or not, I'll watch him play play that game on Madhouse. I want to see him play it on Madhouse. I want to see how long it will take him to uh, to survive in the, in that mode because there's no dude that Madhouse is fucking insane. It might not be like super duper hard, but it it is notably hard. It is notably hard. I guarantee it's hard. Doing the game with PSVR and trying to see if there's any difference or whatever, then maybe. But this first experience, maybe. I want it to be a fun one, and I want it to be one that's not hindered by hardware with terrible visuals. So, doing a normal run with face cam for Resident Evil Seven later in the week, it's possible I'll go back and I'll do it in PSVR. All right. Oh, now, maybe. Resident Evil Seven isn't even the only game out this week. There's also Yakuza Zero, and yes, I have gotten Yakuza Zero on the PlayStation Four. So. What that means so... is that later in the week, once Resident Evil 7 hype calms down and I've, I've probably beaten the game, I'm going to swap over to Yakuza 0. And anyone who's played the Yakuza games or followed my previous playthroughs of Yakuza 4 or 5 knows Yakuza is a very long game, okay? It's a game that's probably going to take me an intense amount of time in order to beat. Therefore, it's perfect because I could start it maybe up this weekend and play it for the entire next week because there are no major new releases next week at all. So it would give me some time to play through this game and enjoy it rather than be like, oh man, I'm playing at the same time as another game and I'm juggling it. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Now, here's something fun you may not realize. <clears throat> <clears throat> I didn't know this at the time, but I am one of the very few gaming YouTubers who does Let's Plays, ongoing narrative Let's Plays, right? I do all the parts of the game who's played Yakuza. Uh, I didn't know this, but both of my playthroughs of Yakuza 4 and 5, when I initially played those games, didn't get much viewership. Go check them now. I'm serious. Go check Yakuza 5. I couldn't believe it because Yakuza 5, I started playing last year. Uh, it was December 2015. Then I took time off for the holidays. And then after that, I started playing it again in January and I finished it. The viewership is insane on YouTube. Like, I'm talking like... Every part has like 10,000 views or more. One of the most viewed playthroughs I've done in like years. I didn't know that because I didn't initially get those views. But when Oh my god, views, dude! It got views! I, I, I'm... Oh man, I need to... I need to fucking calm down. He got views? Dude! Views on videos! Wait, why do I fucking care? Oh, we, no one fucking cares. That's, that's why. What happened is people realized, oh shit, this guy played Yakuza and he's one of the few that did a long narrative playthrough of it and everything. Most people who play the game either do highlights or they don't even do it in English. A lot of people play it in Japanese. <coughs> I'm one okay. of the few people who's done the English language version of it. 
So my playthrough over time basically accumulates tons of attention. So I think Yakuza 0 is going to be more of the same. Maybe when I play it initially, it won't get a ton of attention. But over time, as it goes you know, on YouTube, gets into the search engine and everything, people are like, oh, I want to see English version of Yakuza. Oh, here's a guy who's reading all this, the titles and everything in English. Perfect. So I definitely want to play Yakuza 0. Plus, it's a prequel. It's about wait, the Wait, 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 wait. What? What? Let, let's go back to that. I... Eyes, you know, it's the past of the, the cast of characters that we yeah, see. Come on, walk. come on. In the series, the series prequel, prequel, all this, the titles and everything, and every engine and everything. People are like, oh, I want to see English version of Yakuza. Oh, here's a guy who's reading all this. The English version Yakuza. Oh, here's a guy reading the subtitles. So they can't. So no American U YouTuber that plays Yakuza plays it with English subtitles. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna say this now, I really want to see proof of that. I really fucking doubt Phil's the only American in America who plays the Yakuza 0 in English. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure other Americans who, who buy Yakuza have it, have English subtitles. I, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm willing to call it a fact at this point. There's no way that... No, no, that doesn't make any fucking sense, no. Titles and everything in English, perfect. So, I definitely want to play Yakuza 0. Plus, it's a prequel. It's about the younger guys. You know, it's the past of the, the cast of characters that we've seen in the series over the years. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Resident Evil 7 is the initial focus of the week. Later in the week, I'm going to jump into Yakuza 0, all right? <sighs> now, I definitely, like I said, I want to do a first impressions or review of Resident Evil 7 for KO Gaming. In addition, what I may do, okay, if I do play more Resident Evil 7 in VR later in the week, maybe I'll do a Resident Evil 7 with and re without VR comparison video. I'll go side by side. And Whoa, show a comparison video? I doubt he's going to do that. I I'm just going to tell you that right now. I really fucking doubt he will do that. By the time he does it, he'll either not do it, or by the time he does it, everyone else will have done it. It'll be one of those two. Here's what the game looks like in, without VR, here's what it looks like with VR. Here's what I think is good about doing it this way, here's what I think actually adds to it this way. I don't know if anyone's going to do a video like that on YouTube, I'm thinking I may do that later in the week for KO Gaming, a comparison video. What should you, how should you play the game, what's the definitive version once I've played it through both, okay? I think that could be really neat. In addition, I just did this awesome Twitch and Chill marathon, I may do a montage of the funniest moments from that marathon for KO Gaming. All these random montages, dude. He said he was gonna do a montage of Dark Souls Redemption Run. Now he wants to do a montage of this of, of his Twitch and Chill. What the fuck? Where did this sudden like urge of montages come from? Like, you know what? To be fair, look, like I'm not even saying that's bad. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing he's doing these montages. I'm not saying that's necessarily bad. But I, I'm I, I'm just confused that he's randomly doing montages again. Remember when he did montages? Remember Hits of the Week? That died. And now he's suddenly wanting to go back to montages now. Okay. Gaming as well. So if you've been enjoying all the stuff I've been doing on KO Gaming this month, I did all my year-end series, right? I did the, the most disappointing games of 2016, the funniest moments of 2016, and my Game of the Year awards. If you liked all that, you don't want the video footage over there to end, I think I'm going to start taking time later this week to start making edit, uh, edited videos oh, over there to end. I moments of 2016 and my Game of the Year awards. If you liked all that, you don't want the video footage over there to end, I think I'm going to start taking time. What is it? That's the weirdest way of saying that he's going to do montages. It's like, you don't want it to end? So I'm going to do more montages. I could do more montages or something. It's like, okay, you know, it's not our input at this point. I don't know. It's, 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 it's just it's weird how we said it is all. Later this week to start making edit, uh, edited videos on a regular basis for KO Gaming and balancing that with the gameplay earlier on in the day. So I think it's perfect. I think I'll... I'll Dude, do just fucking wait until he drops. He's going to do this for like maybe... Last time he did montages, he did it all the way until February. So I'm giving I'm gonna be generous and give him till March. He's gonna do these montages up until March and then he's gonna drop it. I guarantee. Once uh you know, once he gets to March, it's gonna be rip montages again. He so so this is what I this is the uh the 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 three pronged cycle at this point. 
Start the year. Do these these things that you say you're gonna do. Drop them in the middle of the year or so, at the latest, and then just continue doing the same shit as you did before, and then repeat. You know, he did a lot of vlogs earlier last year. He dropped it off in September or October or whatever. Um, and then now he's going back to montages, but he's, that's going to be dropped off eventually too. I, I guarantee he's going to drop. He's going to uh, drop off of the uh, uh, montages as soon as uh, he gets bored or tired. To get people more engaged in the edited content while I'm still putting out the new gameplay here on DSP Gaming all week. I think it's going to work out really well. I think it's going to be a really nice balance, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's okay, probably so. going to be a new DSP Tries It this weekend. I know it's been a long time since I did one. It looks like there will be a new DSP Tries It this coming weekend. It's a new offering of fast food that just became available this week. I'm actually very interested to try it out. I think you're going to like it too. So that should be coming this Saturday. Um, <sighs> I don't think there's anything else. To mention for this week, I think between Resident Evil, Yakuza 0, my review slash impressions of Resident Evil, doing a montage of the best of the Twitch and Chill Marathon, that's going to be more than enough coverage. Plus DS, uh, DSP tries it, of course. That's going to be more than enough stuff to cover the entirety of this week on everything that I'm doing, all right? Um, um, the only thing that I really want to remind everyone of, right over here. Patreon! Patreon. It's the end of the month. We've only got about eight days left in the month of January, okay? Now, there's good news and there's bad news. The good uh -oh. news is that it looks like we're going to hit, as long as massive amounts of people don't reduce their pledges at the last minute, we're going to hit the goal for this month. The goal for this month is another Patron's Choice playthrough. We're patrons who donate $5 or more to my Patreon this month, all right? You're going to be able to nominate and vote on a game that I'm going to be playing in either late February, early March. It's going to be kind of the downtime playthrough. <coughs> the downtime playthrough. That I'm going to be balancing with everything throughout those times, okay? So, awesome. I haven't done a Patron's Choice playthrough since the summer of 2016. This will be pretty awesome. Oh, you know how that turned out. To do out. another one, and I'm curious to see what kind mm -hmm. of games people will nominate. I please don't let it be a freaking long-ass RPG. We've already got Persona 5 coming up. We've already got... Please don't be a long-ass RPG. Dude, like, I love how, like, last year... I, I, I kind of want to go back to the other uh, pre-streams where he said this, but I'm pretty sure he said he's not going to do, like, Patreon's choice the same way before, like, or something, and now he's doing Patreon's choice the same way before. I mean, okay. I mean, just, just keep praying, Phil. Zelda coming up. We don't need a long RPG. Please pick something else. Please pick something else. Take a sip. But anyway, in particular, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this month I really need your help, and I'm not kidding. He really you know, needs help. Oh, he's asking for money again. Listen. Listen. Here's the deal, and this is real talk, and I know it's kind of hard to do real talk with a funny hat on, but I'm going to try anyway. Um, this month has been... <laughs> uh, uh, okay. ...really good, if you have been paying attention, between my year-end series on KO Gaming, which got pretty good viewership, and my Res uh, Resident Evil, I almost said, my Dark Souls Redemption run on DSP Gaming, and the streaming of Dark Souls, pretty much my streams have had great attendance... So I've been doing good on Twitch. My videos have been doing pretty good on DSP Gaming. And the videos on KO Gaming have been doing good. So you would think, wow, that's great. That means you have a great month. Wrong. Wrong. According to YouTube, and I'm not exaggerating. I love. By the way, I, I, I heard that YouTube has been slowly giving people their views back. Like, or something. They've been kind of compensating for uh, the amount of views that people lost. Again, that's what I heard. I, I'm not going to say, oh, this is definitive, guys. But... That's what I heard. So I find it funny that everyone's like getting their views back. You know, the, you know it's gonna be a good month for every for every other YouTuber. But now the opposite's happening with Phil. Now it's like the worst month ever. But um. But I also want to note that he bought a thirty dollar uh, calendar. I think it's forty dollars if you include shipping or so. But you know, because it's a one, it was a one day ship shipment of the calendar, so that's that's why it was it's more expensive. Um, so there's that, and then he bought the Switch. Now, he claims that the Switch is going to his credit. The Switch comes out in March. I think, maybe, maybe guys, maybe, he's struggling to pay the Switch off, but remember, he, he, he made a lot of money on, on fucking Patreon. 
Uh, and okay, whatever, whatever, Phil. Here, according to YouTube, this is my worst month ever. And I think the reason is because, that, first of all, remember, YouTube already screwed everyone over last year when whatever algorithm or whatever it was changed. And people are getting lower viewership and lower ad revenue regardless of anything anyway. But this month in particular, January, ad revenue plummeted on YouTube. because Plummeted? Because it's not the holiday season anymore, Phil. What happened was at the end of last year, all the advertisers unloaded their pockets to try to sell products on Christmas. So all the ads around November, December were huge ads. And now this month, the ads on YouTube have been incredibly. I love how he loves that sound effect because he did the same sound effect on his pre-stream today. Like, I, I don't, I really don't want to hear fucking farting noises, TBH. <laughs> profitable. So even though my views have been good, even though you've been watching everything I did this month, and I've been doing good and you're doing good. We're all doing our part. It looks like I'm making like no money this month. We're all doing our part. <laughs> what? What the fuck is that? We're all doing our part. Like watching a video, uh, it, it, I guess it's like doing some activism or something or doing or donating to charity. Watching a video. <laughs> We're all doing our part. Phil, I'm sorry, but no one cares about you, about your views. You just care about watching your videos, and that's it. I mean, you can say that's the same thing, but the difference is that I don't go to a video and look at the views and be like, This is 2,396. I cannot enjoy this video. I want my videos to always have 5,066 views. 2,396. Nope. I'm gone. Fuck this, like, come on, really? And I'm not even exaggerating. If I make like half as much as I'm used to making in a month, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills coming up. I don't know how to pay my bills. In March, because that's how it works. It's a two month delay between, you know, when I make the money and when I actually get paid, it's a two month delay. So I need help. Whether it's if you're good, if you could. I need help. As he darts around and all this stuff. Guys, I need help, guys. Uh, just, just give me your money and, I'll, and, I, and maybe in the spirit of giving, I will, I will do something for you. But uh, if it doesn't happen, don't fucking bitch because uh, you're, 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 you're giving me money. That's the point. Go up for the next week on Twitch and watch me play Resident Evil and Yakuza and you could do bit cheers and you sub to my channel, whether you pledge to my Patreon, however it is, for the next eight days, if you could please contribute, if you like my stuff, I'd appreciate it because I want to keep doing this as a Dude, job. look how, how hardcore begging this is. There is like three minutes left and he's just, the whole time he's like darting his eyes, opening his eyes really wide, like doing this, like, I need your help guys, I got bills to pay, got mouths to feed. Like, okay. I don't want one fucking month of bad ad revenue on YouTube to completely destroy my chances of doing this long term because I did everything right, but- I did everything right. How- Okay, okay, look. What you do right in your video content all that shit is fucking subjective. I think it's subjective or objective. Whichever one means it's your opinion. Whichever one. It's, it's, it's your own personal opinion if you're doing something right. I can say, oh, I'm doing my channel right. Uh, I'm working on videos, you know, when I'm ready to upload them, I'm doing it, I'm doing it right. Someone can then tell me, you're not doing it right because you need to upload at a, at, you know, at a consistent schedule so that people can always know, excuse me, when to tune in and all this kind of stuff. See how that works? I mean, to me, I think doing you, the way that I'm doing YouTube is uploading videos when they're ready to be uploaded or when I'm finished with them. I still have a Theo Explains video I've been working on. It's just that I've really been busy with like commissions and just other stuff and you know that has to do with me being an EMT. Um, but I but me saying oh I'm doing YouTube right doesn't mean that it is necessarily right. Just uploading videos doesn't mean you're doing YouTube right because I can say well doing videos in 20 minutes to 30 minutes increments isn't doing in YouTube right. Oh doing this you're not doing it right. All this kind of stuff, but if I told that to Phil, it's like, well, there's no right way to do YouTube, even though here he's saying there's a right way to, to do YouTube. Okay. YouTube failed at getting good ads this month, so therefore I go out of business because I can't pay my bills, you know what I mean? I'm nervous.
You don't. You should not be using YouTube as a end all be all for your money problems, Phil. No one should be thinking YouTube is a stable job. No one. No one. Like, if, if you are gonna go start a YouTube career, you better have a fucking job. I'm sorry, but there's no way you can just do YouTube and, and not worry about a job unless you have a consistent um, fan base that will so that will buy merchandise and do all that kind of shit. But if you're gonna sit there and, and just go, like, YouTube's not screwing me over, like, then you better get a job if you're not sure how, when you're gonna pay your bills. See, I'll, and I will, I will say this. I will say this. I really don't b buy for a second this guy is struggling. Th or at least struggling as much as he thinks he is. Because, think about this. Think about this. Let's say you are struggling to pay your bills. And you're in, you're in Phil's position. You're doing YouTube as a job. You have no job. You're working at your... You're just uploading videos to YouTube, okay? And you are struggling to pay bills. Are you, are you going to sit around and and pray that YouTube is going to bail your ass or are you going to actually get a job? Because as much as I, as as me and other detractors might might say like insulting things to Phil or or think that he's dumb in some regards, I really don't think he's dumb enough to uh not get a job when he really needs to get a job, you know? Like I I, I really doubt or I, I at least don't want to believe that he'll that he will wait for an eviction notice to, be, to lay down his door before getting a job. So, I, I mean, he could be telling the truth. And, and I'll meet people halfway. If you if you if you take him for his word, and and you don't and you don't agree with me, I'll meet you halfway and say that, you know, even if he is telling the truth. Okay, he's telling he's telling the truth. He's struggling and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine to support him. But I I just don't. I'm just very skeptical about this. I am I'm struggling to pay my bills when he w was so quick, so quick. Fuck, I can't fucking slap my fingers today, but so quick to pre-order the switch within a day, and, and, and he d doesn't think about his bills immediately. He he's gonna buy a game and the switch out the same day. The same day, so the switch is three hundred dollars. Uh, Zelda is sixty dollars, so three hundred and sixty dollars. He's gonna be paying for the Switch. He recently said he why he might consider getting the one hundred dollar Injustice Two bundle, so he'll be paying four hundred and sixty dollars in total with the first half of the year. By June, if you accumulate all the money he spends, he's it's gonna be over fucking four four hundred easily. And he's saying, I don't know if I'll be able to pay my bills. If he's struggling to pay his bills, do you think he would? Because really, really, you know, right now I'm tight on money myself. I'm not gonna be fucking bought. You know, I would love to get a Cintiq right now. You know, I have I have this thing. This was a, a Christmas gift. Do you think I'm gonna go out and buy a Cintiq and not think, well, that's one thousand dollars down the drain? Oh well, I mean, right? Well, no, I'm, that that's fucking irresponsible. That's irresponsible with my money. To buy stuff that, you know, yeah, I can tell you, oh, well, a Cintiq would be beneficial for for this and that. I can easily tell you that, that oh, yeah, it would be beneficial, but would it be financially sound of me to spend money that I don't have a lot of on something that's, like, $1,000? No. I would love the Switch. I would. I would love to buy one. But I'm not going to fucking sp spend $300 with money I would rather spend keep my bank account to spend on stuff that is more important than fucking video games at this point. So, I'm sorry, he can't handle his fucking money. That's what I'm getting from this. It's that he, he has such poor management of money, he doesn't know, oh, well, you know, like, I'm not saying that, oh, he can't buy video games whenever he wants, but it's just that he, he should really think, what is it that I really would want? You know, what's the thought I really need? Like, if he really needs to play Zelda, just get it for the Wii U. It's $60 on the Wii, he'd, he'd just be spending $60. And, that, and that's that's fine. You know? Spend $60 on Injustice 2. But to spend $300 so quickly to get the Switch, and to spend another, one, possibly, $100 for the DLC pack for Injustice 2, is fucking reckless. 
there's no reason to do that. And honestly, uh, you know, I was going to get interested too. I might just wait until the Game of the Year edition comes out. Because that's fucking ridiculous how they're doing that shit. So, but Phil, dude, he has a business degree. He knows how to handle money. I am honestly very nervous. <laughs> so please, if you can, please oh, watch, so contribute in any way. You've so many different ways now between subbing on Twitch, cheering with bits on Twitch, or pledging to my Patreon. Three completely different ways that you can contribute, whatever's easier for you. I would appreciate that. Okay? I would appreciate that. Even though I I banned some guy permanently from my Patreon, I really, so I really, fuck off. That's it for the weekend preview, everyone. I don't have anything else to talk about. I'm so excited. All right, immediately after I've done recording this, I'm going to jump in the shower, and then I'm going to set up for the Evil stream. I'm so excited for tonight to see what this game is. I hope that you're excited, too. Um, <clears throat> so that is it. Without further ado, I do want to say one final time, that Twitch Chill stream was so awesome, right? Thank you to the patrons in December who made it possible. You guys and gals are awesome. And Except for traditional games. You're not fucking awesome, dude. Every other uh, guy and gal are, are awesome. Not not traditional games who, who uh, supported that. Just look at the unique event that happened because of Patreon. That's what I mean, how Patreon is so important for me to not only be able to continue to do this as a job, but to try out new things and allow me to have... See, see, that's what I'm talking about! Wow. That's what I'm talking about. He says the, the this kind of shit. That, yeah, that's why people get fucking upset when a goal is not hit. Because they spend money for him to do a goal, and when he doesn't contribute to the goal, or do what he said the goal is, people will get mad. Uh, wow. Wow, dude. The flexibility not to just constantly be doing a regular video game playthrough. Patreon in two years has allowed me to branch out so much. It's such a good thing. Consider pledging. Branch out. Well, not not really, because he just did the same shit he did in the past. Like, this is the only uh, Patreon uh, goal that actually had him try new things, to be honest. Uh, every but, but he could have done that for free, but okay, whatever, but... Okay. You have it, all right? Thanks to the December patrons. Peace out, everyone. See you for Resident Evil 7 all this week. See you for Yakuza 7 at the end of the week. See you on KO Gaming for edited stuff. I'm so excited for everything. See you then. Okay, I think he's gonna do his fucking, uh, crawl, right? Yeah. We don't need to see that. Okay, everyone. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now I'm gonna go back and either do more of the commissioner or play Resident Evil 7. One of the two. Uh, thank you guys for watching. It's been great making vids again. Uh, well, actually, I've been making vids for a long time now, but it is what it is. See you guys in the next one.